As our co-chairs have previously mentioned, tonight we have Lucas, Erica, and Sonali as our guest panelists. I just wanna say once again, thank you for generously volunteering your time with us tonight to provide some helpful feedback for the exciting installation proposals our student groups have been working hard to prepare. The order for our presentations today will be a flow proposing for the dual tone theme under the 3D experiential space category and double A's proposing for also the dual tone theme under the 2D experiential projection category. Okay, with that being said, I'd like to call upon Flo to kick off our presentations for the night. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this year's installation night. My name is Amna, I'm a third year student. And I'm Zaina, also a third year student. And today we're gonna be presenting our proposal for an installation called Cloud. Our assigned theme for this year was dual tones, which refers to the interstitial space between the past and the future. Our category that we're under is 3D experimental space, and we plan to build a scaled model. So cloud is meant to promote the return to tangible physical means of creative consumption and production. Uh, this was researched by looking at shifts in the design process and music consumption over recent decades. Uh, contemporary design culture often pushes designers to explore digital softwares that produce hyper-realistic renders. And while this can be a great thing, it does have a downside, which is the negligence of hand drawing and the emotional, physical, and mental interaction that comes with that. The different facades of the installation represent the importance of the line. The line that travels from our mind to our hand to the paper and then to other people's eyes and minds. Nowadays, instead of compiling design iterations on tracing paper, many people choose to go the digital route and store their work on the cloud. Cloud computing has increased the distance between individuals and their art, and it has taken away our ability to touch, store, and misplace our art. As Zaina mentioned, people seem to choose a digital consumption of art over traditional. This is seen in all industries, music being just one example. CDs are becoming more obsolete as time passes and online streaming platforms are on the rise. Some view the lack of tangibility that comes with the digital world as impersonal. The cloud in our installation is built um, with shards of CDs and attempts to reconcile the digital and the physical and remind us that a, um, a balance between these both are achievable. Some of the inspirations behind our design include a sculptor by Toronto artist, Jim Haig, who used upcycle CDs to create his um, installations. Elise Morenz prefers to use the 3D um, CDs in their whole form and uses lighting to make use of fluid landscape. Sue Sunny Park uses chain link fencing and iridescent plexiglass to create a um, lighter and more airy look to her installations. So now we're going to talk about some research that sort of fueled this project. So Gensler Principal and Design Director Alex Fernandez writes about how hand drawing should still be a go-to tool for all designers. Uh, he believes that messy process drawings are able to engage the group and spark more discussion during um, client visioning sessions because they communicate the design as a work in progress rather than a finished product. So Alex Fernandez is not against technology, but just believes that hand drawings should precede technology in the design process. Uh, he says that a design process that starts with the hand humanizes the process and establishes a strong foundation for the later stages where computer generated precision takes precedence. So to go hand in hand with that, in her article, Great Weather and Happy People, Snowheader Research Director Julia Schlegel mentions that, uh, she mentions a study that suggests that decreased realism Helps the, helps the viewer focus on the building and promotes dialogue uh, about the design concept. Mexican architect Tatiana Bilbao is another advocate of hand drawings. She banned digital renderings from her studio as she believes they get in the way of the creative, creative process and hinder the evolution of design. Um, in terms of music consumption, CD sales have fallen 80% in the past decade as a result of online streaming platforms. A study conducted on music consumption showed that digital music is consumed in a different, less involved way than physical music. The findings showed that physical music listeners wrote more and longer reviews on music, were less extreme in their star ratings online, and more successful in persuading others of their opinion. The same study also showed that digital users' involvement with their music was lower due to the, la due to the loss of haptic motives, um, so in other words, digital music disappears somewhere in our devices and can be seen or felt. When it came to thinking about the look and feel of our space, Zainaya wanted to take full advantage of the beautiful reflections created by the CDs as they hit the light. 
We wanted something that looked airy and imitated the organic shape of clouds with smaller shards surrounding them as accents. The sketchy lines on the walls are hand-drawn and add dimension to the room. Um, they're added to remind us that starting a design with your hand humanizes the process, in the words of Alex Fernandez. Um, the drawing puts emphasis on the iterative nature of traditional design and restores the emotional connection between the designer and the physical line, which is lost in digital clouds. These are a couple of diagrams that break down the different components of a cloud structure. The section allows us to see the hollow skeleton, which will be made using chicken wire for each cloud. LED strings will be woven throughout the cloud to give a subtle glow from the inside, in addition to the exterior lighting. Uh, the small CDs will be placed uh, held together using fishing wire that is clear. Um, and in the call out diagram, you can see how that would look. Um, it also allows for light to pass through them and the CDs will be a blanket on top of the light. Here's the floor plan of our installation at one to 50 scale. Uh, we assume the dimensions of what it might look like at full scale when we're creating it digitally. But when it comes time to build, we'll be, doing, we'll be scaling it down. Currently it's at five by five and a half meters. So here's um, the north and west elevations of the space that show the clouds as well as, as well as the cards of CD pieces that will be freely hanging from the string, reminiscent of raindrops. Um, this is a render of what the built space might look like. Uh, there will be LED light strips uh, added along the floor and ceiling to make sure that the light is hitting the CDs from all angles for maximum reflection. These reflections are meant to remind the viewer of the beauty of finding a balance between physical means of music consumption, which is represented by the CDs, with digital means represented by the cloud. In terms of materials, we wanted to keep our environmental footprint minimal, and so we chose to reuse and repurpose CDs for the formation of our clouds. Uh, we hope to collect these CDs from friends, family, and anyone else willing to donate, really. In the case that we do need more, we have a set budget of $20 to go to the thrift store or local secondhand shops um, to buy CDs. We'll paint the line work on MDF because we need a sturdy base that will be able to with withhold the weight of the clouds. Um, and the soldering iron will be used to burn holes into the CDs and a thread the fishing wire through so that we can hold it all together. Here's the estimated budget based on prices at the time right now and how many units we think we'll be needing based on the size of our scaled model. It comes to a total of $180 and I rounded up some of the prices. So hopefully we should be able to do it for a little bit less. Um, most, of it, most of the prices just come from the MDF panels. And I think that's all. Uh, great presentation, y'all. Uh, what a lovely platform to, to be considering pivoting digital consumption. Um, and uh, I think your project is really on point for a number of reasons. Uh, I don't even think you need the $20 for your budget for CDs. Those things are just landfill fodder everywhere. <laughs> You'll probably have to like say no to some if you're sourcing them <laughs> from, uh, from the public, um, which is such an interesting, it's like an interesting concept that really makes you think about the development of, um, of the consumable music object. Um, I always get mostly stuck on logistics in terms of presentation because that's largely what I do. Um, and I'm always curious when chicken wire comes into play because chicken wire is really heavy. <laughs> and so considering um, the, the fact you're wanting to, to have an airy effect and then logistically um, having that form, that kind of organic form, um, whilst using something that's like not, not the most um, light is mm -hmm. a thing to think about. Um, and the idea of like, you know, when you have chicken wire, you never want to see the chicken wire. That's like the, the hope, but you always kind of sometimes do. So I, I would I would red light that in terms of um, when you do a prototype for a smaller one. Um, I also had on a more conceptual level, I appreciated the clouds. Um, you know, you're talking about the CD whose ancestors were like, you know, records. Um, and like more kind of antiquated forms of, of music uh, proliferation. Um, and I immediately would go to like disco ball as like kind of a, kind of a, a concept, but then also th your shape um, is a little bit like molecular. So you're kind of considering the origin, like, you know, the, the beginning of, um, which I went to naturally uh, based on your presentation. So that was really nice. Um, can you tell me again, where would this be 
where would this be presented like uh, theoretically? Like what, where did you envision it, envision it being held? Um, well, given the circumstances, we were thinking of doing a scaled model of it. Mm -hmm. And so it would be a little small scaled model, but probably like one meter by one meter, still pretty big yeah. um, so that we can get all the CD pieces in there and it's not working really me school. Mm -hmm. but a scaled model with that. And it would be like an interior installation or, or, or a ex, okay, uh, outside? Interior. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Mirrored, mirrored stuff, there's so much um, wiggle room to play with light. Um, and it's harder to do because, you know, if you have mirrors going every which way to control that light for the desired effect to not like pedestrianize what your, your initial rendering is, is a really important thing to focus on. But I think that there's a lot of wiggle room. So um, in that way, hopefully it's more fun and less tedious. Um, thanks, y'all. Thank you. Great, thank you, Lucas. Does um, anyone else wanna jump in, Sonali or Erica? I can go ahead. Um, I, yeah, it was, it was really well presented. I like the sort of research that you guys had done. You seem to have a very good grasp on the direction you wanted to go in. Um, I think the, yeah, the Preston projects uh, clearly had a great influ influence on the direction that you chose to go in. Um, but um, my mind also immediately goes to fabrication because that's sort of the, the space that I occupy at the moment. So I immediately was thinking about sort of the technical precision needed to, um, you know, to, to actually build it in the way that you represented it so beautifully in your, in your sort of watercolored sketches, which is really nice. The sort of soft um, representation of it was good because it leaves enough wiggle room for us to envision what this would look like. Um, what I, and I, I honestly can't think of the artist that I'm thinking of, but there's, um, this massive installation artist who uses, gosh, I'm, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but like fishing nets, these giant installations um, that are suspended, they're outdoor installations, and she uses fishing nets, I believe, like recycled fishing nets to create these installations. And what I thought when Lucas, I'm not familiar with chicken wire and uh, it is a material and the weight, but what I just thought is would you be able to use um, the like link all the CDs together um, as you've described, but then use um, cables to sort of suspend it the way you want, and you would be able to pull and tease and create forms that are a little more playful. Maybe they won't be as pristine as these sort of um, animated cloud forms, but you would be able to sort of pull and maybe there could be movement attached to it, but that would require. Um, tons of points of tension that is like suspending, which is primarily a really flimsy, um, a flimsy form, right? You have this connection of all of these CDs that are linked together with these wires. But um, if weight, as Lucas said, would be um, sort of a technical challenge, maybe something like that will, would offer some flexibility um, and would still create that sort of really see-through ethereal sort of look that you're going for if executed really well. Um, so that's something that came to mind. But other than that, it was really well presented. It's an interesting concept. And I liked the, um, the simplicity of the presentation, because I think you have a very clear understanding of, uh, of your concept. So it didn't require bells and whistles. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I'm sorry about that random blue mark right there. I can't read rid of it. I think I drew on my screen by accident. <laughs> I was wondering what that was. I thought it was on my screen. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't know when that happened, um, but it's there now and I can't get rid of it, so. <laughs> That's all good. We've all had our technical difficulties in this time. <laughs> um, yeah, really good job. I really like the concept. I do really miss my CD collection personally. <laughs> Um, I was just kind of wondering from an idea perspective, um, why the cloud shapes for like the CD structure instead of like another shape? Um, so the clouds were kind of supposed to represent the digital cloud or the idea of cloud computing and how everything from like design work to music is now stored on uh, the cloud. But, yeah. Okay. 
Okay. And then with the lines, did you mention what that will be fabricated of? Would, would it be like hand painted or would it be kind of yeah. like a vinyl application? So we were planning on hand painting those actually. Okay. Because yeah, they do. Like... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead. Um, when you have it kind of in that grid form, it kind of reminds me of stuff that you would make on Grasshopper a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So it does look somewhat computer generated, but it would be nice to kind of see it in like a hand painted form because then it yeah. is like mixing those two mediums. So I think in that so, case, then it's good. <laughs> yeah. So the ones we have on here are actually, they were hand drawn. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> they look awesome. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they look a lot more imperfect when you actually zoom in, but um, yeah, it's kind of went back to the whole idea of like, like the sketchy line that isn't like perfectly straight and uh, yeah, like that was the whole idea behind it basically. Okay, and then how would just, I'm, I'm just a really like a why person, but how, how would this connect to the clouds in the room itself? So um, the lines are supposed to represent more um, the design approach. Um, like the lines are supposed to speak to uh, the shift from um, analog to digital in the design world. And then the clouds are supposed to represent creative consumption. So music and uh, yeah. So it was just like consumption and production basically. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. thank you very much for this presentation. and. It was really well done. Thank you. Thank you guys for all your feedback. Uh, great, yes. Thank you to all the panelists for your feedback and the group for your presentation. I did just have um, one comment um, for your presentation. Uh, I think your approach to sort of hands-on fabrication and concept overall is really commendable and hits the brief well. Um, I would just suggest that maybe uh, thinking about the sort of dual aspect of the theme um, a little bit more. I think at the moment it's very focused on um, sort of this hands-on fabrication. And I know like with CDs, the um, light quality and reflections is quite iridescent. So maybe um, ways you can incorporate dual sort of um, concept would be like trying to play with um, lighting to augment the color of the reflections or at the moment you have a really great sort of area like quality going on with sort of lightness, maybe you could try and balance that out with something heavy, um, mm -hmm. just sort of those oppositional things. But other than that, great presentation. John, could I add one more thing that just came to mind? Sure, sort of ahead. riffing off of what you just said. I'll, I'll keep it very brief. Um, I feel like, yeah, what you just said is, uh, was a really good point. And maybe what they could play with is sanding the CDs to create different levels of reflection. So it allows like such a reflective surface, you can alter it in so many different ways. So you can sand it with different grits, you can create different patterns, which would then affect the reflective nature of it. So maybe that without needing to switch materials or paint or do anything rather, um, yeah, laborious in different ways, perhaps something as simple as as you know, very strategically marking or carving or engraving their surfaces could add, add that uh, diversity when it comes to the reflective surface. Um, and uh, the other thing I was gonna say is since this is spatial, it didn't come to mind earlier, but when you went back to one of your hand renderings, um, I just thought it'd be kind of neat if you took them, like the patterns on the wall, all of these like beautiful swerving lines sort of check them on a journey because I just looked back, uh, John brought up, you know, the theme and the past and past to future journey. And so if there was some way, if this was an actual space, you know, someone entering the space sort of experienced it. And so you lay it out in sort of layers sort of so that they're walking through this journey rather than having it all, you know, um, all sort of situated in the same area. So you can really show that sort of contrast. But that's, I mean, you can, you can interpret it in many different ways. It's something that, that came to mind. Um, that's all. Thank you for that. Um, that actually brings up another point that reminds me. Um, I just wanted to quickly ask, were you guys imagining this to be uh, something you would physically build or were you guys looking to do more of a scale model? 
for your final I mean, outcome. originally, like if the circumstances were different, then we would definitely want to build this. Um, but uh, for now, we are planning on doing a, a scaled model of the space. Okay, for sure. Um, so this is something we can speak further down the road, but um, just to give you some heads up, we are currently working on um, contacting some um, locations to do potential pop-ups. So there may be a chance to do a physical build for this. Okay, yeah, that would be great. All right, so this concludes our 3D presentations. And at this moment, we will have a five minute opportunity for questions from the audience. Um, and also for the audience to move into breakout rooms or to have a quick break while the next group will be setting up. Thanks guys for watching. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Amber Way. And my name is Aditi Thacker and we are the Double A's. Our chosen theme for this year's RCID's 2021 year end show is Dual Tones and 2D called Lot. Throughout our whole development process, we maintained one general concept and that was the impact of global warming. Though this is a very common topic, we wanted to illustrate the irreversible destruction of global warming by showcasing the past and present through a unique lens. Therefore, we settled with the idea of a keyhole acting as a portal between the present and past, symbolizing how we are forever locked out of the past, though through the portal, we see the past and are more motivated to make a change in the present. So here are some following president images allowing you to understand the overall idea that we are proposing. Um, first, we have the changes of global warming in this first slide, which these pictures show before and after of the effects of global warming, which will be the main concept of our design. So as you can see, the first picture here as a before and after picture in Alaska, where all the glaciers have melted and now it's all green because of global warming, as well as shown it on Mount Kilimanjaro. And next we have our uh, more president images allowing you to understand the overall feel of our installation. Um, when analyzing these president images, there was a similar idea of going from one place to another. Therefore, we were inspired to showcase dual tones using a portal-like element within our final design. So here are a couple of images that allow you to understand the main concept of our design, where we're using a portal from traveling from one place to another. And these last president images allow us to help us design our portal, which will include visual effects. So here are a couple of images of what we would like to use to showcase our portal. And taking these president images in mind, we have created a rough sketch of how our design will look, although it is still in the process of development. So as you can see, the keyhole acts as an entrance to another dimension, which in our design will be the past of global warming. And surrounding the keyhole will be the present state of the environment. We may also remove the dividing line between the two to create a more of a cohesive look. And since our theme is dual tone, we have decided to explore the different types of color palettes. One being bright blue tones, and such as the color of glaciers, and one being green tones for the current state of the environment. Meanwhile, we have also created a schedule to help us better organize our time. So from December 24th to the 29th, we will work on constructing the present component. From December 30th to January 2nd, we will work on constructing our past component. From January 3rd to the 8th, we will work on creating an animation for the portal, since we would also like to incorporate motion graphics within our visual. Um, lastly, from January 9th to the 13th, we will combine all these elements together and create a final presentation. And for our budget, we will be using the illustrating app Procreate, which we have already purchased prior to this, so that will be free. And we will be using Adobe After Effects for the visual effects, which we are really excited to learn more about, and Adobe Photoshop, which the school has already kindly provided us. And that wraps up our presentation. Thank you for listening to our proposal. Now we will have critiques from the panelists. If any of the panelists has something to say, you can go ahead. Thank you for the presentation, uh, the two of you. Would you mind going back to your um, 
the sketch for your for your de design, right? Um, so John or the presenters, please jump in if I am not clear of the sort of 2D approach, but I'm trying to understand how this will be done, what elements will be built versus what would be uh, projections. Um, stop me at any time if I'm wrong about this, but do you envision all aspects of this being um, images and projections or will there be a combination of built components? Like, will the keyhole actually be um, a built space and then the space behind it will have the projection of the past? Just walk me through this in a little more detail if you don't mind. Yeah, for our design, we are actually doing it 2D. So this will all be digital. So the keyhole will be I guess 3D inside the 2D dimension and behind it will be, we actually think that around the keyhole will all be present, present state of the environment. So we might remove the dividing line between the two to yes. And the keyhole will act as a dual tone to show the past and present. I don't know if that answers your question, sorry about that. So to clarify, the keyhole will be an actual cutout in, in some sort of space. Yes, it will be, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's compelling. I think it's um, interesting. It'd be lovely to see as you guys progress what this you know could look like because this is a this is sort of a skeletal idea of what it might be. But there's a ton that you can do with it. Um, yeah, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll go next. Uh, yeah, that was the point that I was curious about too, Sonali. Um, I, I've seen, I don't know if you've been to the interior design show in the last couple of years, there's every year there's always this one, um, there's like someone who does like a black mirror effect with lighting that kind of goes deep in it. It's like this great prototyping effect that is completely beyond me. Um, but in, in that way, I feel like there's ways it can be really, really sharp. So I'm curious to see once you guys get your, get deeper into your programs, kind of what what the outcome is because it's all very the, the world is at your fingertips with those three um, uh, resources uh, and I love the past and present vibe you know I think that people respond really well to images of the past even just here in Toronto um, you know there's there's these Instagram accounts that are showing what neighborhoods were a hundred years ago and it was just like farmland and people really love having access to that type of like visual um, reference to to time because it's such a like tricky thing once you get into like the thousands of years um so i love it in terms of a concept apparently we are on our i just looked it up we're on our fifth ice age so lucky we get to have one of our own that we made happen <laughs> so, um uh and i uh, another thing that's just kind of random but like it makes me think which means like to me that means the the project is like a success in terms of um, making me think of a broader picture. I just saw something on the internet recently of this huge tropical plant that hasn't existed for a hundred million years, but because of global warming, it's like appeared in the rainforest and it's like gorgeous, it's huge. It's like a dinosaur plant for sure. Um, so it's interesting that in this change, we're kind of returning in ways that we haven't known before. Um, so it's a nice way to think about the present and the past. So in that way, thanks for making me think. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> um, so with the colors that you're planning, you said that you would have more of the green tones kind of on the outside of the keyhole, and then you're going to have the blues inside. And then you mentioned that you're going to have an animated aspect to this installation. Is it just in the keyhole, or is it inside? It's, it's going to be like the border of the keyhole. So it's going to be like a glowing kind of animation surrounding it. Um, we're hoping that we do it the same color as the past kind of tones, so it correlates with that. Okay, and then is it kind of gonna be like leading you into the space or what do you envision for that? We envisioned it to lead into the space. Okay, I can kind of see what you're <laughs> thinking there. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of Alice in Wonderland a little bit <laughs> when she's going to enter the keyhole, um, maybe in a better way <laughs> than in the movie. 
Um, yeah, why did you pick the shape of the keyhole also instead of other shapes? Erica, I also was just thought of that too. That's a great <laughs> question. Uh, we use a keyhole because it kind of symbolizes how it's there's a, like a lock and there's like a door and it's kind of like how the present even like with the glaciers and everything through global warming it's like a locked we're like locked outside of the past because it's so hard to go get back there and then we have to be the ones that are working to get back there <laughs> okay so we're the key <laughs> basically yeah. okay thank you for that <laughs> Yeah, I think Go that's ahead. a smart, that's a really smart move, actually, because instead of, you know, based on your examples of this kind of organic shape, the keyhole is like very associative to a door. So it kind of implicates us a bit, in a bit, a bit more of a direct way. So that was a smart move. There's just one last thing I wanted to add that I thought would be, and sort of loops in what I said earlier, I can just envision walking into space like this. And it's this, as you've rendered it, this like giant space where you're immediately impacted, you're engulfed in the current um, environment. So whatever those graphics and colors and projections are, you're sort of bathing in it. But what you can see beyond the keyhole is the past. And I was just wondering, just food for thought, if, the, um, if you can create more of a contrast and more of a journey for the viewer. So I'm envisioning this keyhole, rather than I'm looking at the thickness of the wall in your render, um, and see what if you were to extrude um, out that wall and create this really thick wall, but then the keyhole shrinks down. And so what it's doing is it potentially, like when a viewer enters the space, the space they're not immediately met with both, but you draw them in and it's almost like you talked about a pinhole and a keyhole. So what if, you know, they are, they have to like walk within this keyhole and then they're greeted with something that is far smaller and far more a human scale where they're really looking almost peeking into the past and so when they enter a space like this they're not immediately um you know um they're not immediately exposed to all aspects of it but you take them on this journey which which takes longer and allows them to think more about what they're experiencing so you're sort of pulling and drawing it out so that by the time they end up at that smaller sort of opening of the keyhole, it's more of an impactful um, experience. Just a thought. Yeah. That's very interesting. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, just to add on to that point too, I do think, yeah, like extending the thickness of the wall would be a really good idea. And then even if you could kind of make it so that the opening is like shrinking a little bit, Maybe that could like emphasize the projection that you might have onto that surface. Sort of like a narrow pathway going into yeah, it. Yeah, when it's, I don't know how to say it exactly <laughs> right now, but yeah. It like converges, right? Converges. Erica, like it converges. <laughs> That's the word, yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, I was wondering, um, just to clarify, if it was converging with the wall be covering the conversion so that we can't see the past anymore or? we see a small version of the past at the end? <laughs> Maybe there could be projections on the interior of this keyhole that, that join present to past. Does that make sense? Um, so if we're looking at present day 2020, the past, whatever you're showing is like a thousand years in the, in the past or something. Maybe the interior walls of this like narrowing, converging keyhole could have projections of linking present to past um, to show that, but I'm just riffing now. That's just a thought. Thank you. Um, yeah, those are all really great thoughts. And um, I guess just to add in further as well, I'm not sure if I missed it, but were you guys looking at doing just um, one image for this sort of final outcome? I mean, we initially thought of one image, which was from this angle, but we're also thinking about maybe doing like a view straight ahead, kind of, so you can see all different, two different angles of what mm -hmm. it would look like. Okay, yeah, I just, sorry, go ahead. 
no, no, no worries. Um, I think we might, we might do like layering. So like the present would be one layer and then the past would be another layer. So I guess yeah. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to clarify I was because I wasn't sure if you guys were maybe unaware, but um, I feel like in your concept and presentation so far, there's such a It's kind of hard to hear you, John. Sorry, did I cut off? Oh, yeah, you're fine now. <laughs> I was just going to suggest that um, in your presentation and concept, there's such a beautiful narrative going on already that it might be um, really helpful to do multiple images or illustrations to sort of uh, storyboard this or even do a, a short animated uh, video to sort of really highlight that experience or moment from when you go from past to present and sort of the journey that Sonali and the other um, panelists have mentioned so far. Yeah, while we learn about more about Adobe After Effects, we will definitely play around with that. We're not really experienced with um, digital animations yet. For sure, no worries. And I think that's totally fine. I mean, sometimes great design comes in sort of the accidents and in-betweens, you know. Um, okay, we're quite ahead on time. Uh, I'll just reach out if any of the guest viewers at the moment have any questions for the presenters or panelists. You're more, you're more than welcome to ask them now. No takers. <laughs> um, let me just double check. Carissa, how are we on time? Is it too early? I think we'll be moving um, into new breakout rooms a little bit earlier. Um, just one second. Oh, wait, we have a question in the chat. Oh, go ahead. Is, it, is there a, going to be a way for us to see the final result? Um, yes, yeah, so all of these uh, presentations for tonight are proposals for um, a final installation. So at the moment, we have 10 groups um, propositioning for a project. And then um, after some deliberation from the team and panelists, there will be six groups chosen and those installations will all be featured on our website as part of our digital show. No worries, yes. So you'll be able to see all of them, um, I believe sometime in May. So keep an eye out. 